Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new. So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Mortal Kombat 2021 movie. I already made a review on this movie, if you want to go check it out, link will be in the description for you guys to go watch it. But, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about whether or not I think the movie was bad, or whether or not I think it was really, really good. And... I went over it in the in the spoiler of, uh, review. Uh, just letting you guys know, it is a spoiler review. However, the movie came out a very long time ago now, so it shouldn't really matter. But just in case some of you haven't seen it and you want to, just letting you guys know, it is a spoiler review. And in it, I believe I said that I didn't think it was great, but I didn't think it was bad. And for the most part, I still definitely think that. I don't think it's bad by any means, but I don't think it's great either. And in today's video, I want to go more in depth about why I don't think it's perfect, but also why I don't think it deserves hate that some people are giving it. Um, I think it's pretty, some people are just being very hard on this movie for no reason. Um, and they're acting like there is absolutely nothing good about it, which absolutely is not true. Um, the movie is, the actual sets are, oh, they're pretty good, but, um, some aren't great, but that's not really the main thing I want to touch upon here. Um, they, some people act like some of the characters just weren't good at all, and that just isn't the case. You know, characters like Kano, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, when he was in it, they're all extremely good, and the rest, I don't think any characters were actually straight up bad, I don't think some were sort of underwritten. Right, some people saying Shang Tsung and Raiden were done bad. In terms of writing, I would say so, but in terms of acting, I don't think they were bad at all. I think the actors were great, I think they were fine. But I think the writing is where this movie sort of falls short. Um, is this movie bad at all to me? No, there are some bits that aren't great. However, I wouldn't ever say this movie is straight up bad, because in my opinion it isn't. I've seen way worse movies, but I've seen better movies as well. I'm not saying this movie's great, but I do believe it's good. And the reason I think it's good is because, mainly because, I think a lot of the characters are either done good or they're done really, really great. Um, and it's it follows the Mortal Kombat lore decently, you know, we don't really have the tournament in this movie, which personally I kind of liked because I'm kind of sick of seeing the tournament and everything, um, but obviously it would have been sort of welcomed if they did do it, but I appreciate that they tried something new, and it seems like the tournament will happen in the next movie, which is going to be interesting because characters from MK1 uh, died in the movie, so it'll be interesting to see if they bring, you know, Sub-Zero back as Noob Cyborg in the first tournament, that would be kind of weird, but, you know, obviously we will just have to wait and see for it, oh wow, we will just have to wait and see for the sequel, which is definitely be, which was definitely hinted at at the end of the movie, so, uh, we'll just have to see, but, you, I'm probably gonna say that a lot, because, it would, when we're talking about the sequel, I'll probably, I'll probably say that a lot, but, um, Overall, guys, I think this movie does get a lot of hate that it doesn't deserve. It is by no means perfect. Um, you know, if I was going to go character by character, which I will do a little bit here, um, but I'm not going to do it for too long because I believe I did do it a little in the spoiler review, so I don't really want to take up too much of your time going over stuff that, you know, I already have. But, as I said before, Kano, Sub-Zero, and... Scorpion were done really well, and I would even say Kung Lao as well. Kung Lao was done really, really well, even though he... Um, oh yeah, there, there will be probably some spoilers here, guys, so if you want to click off now, uh, definitely do so. Um, you know, Kung Lao, obviously, aside from the fact that he did die in the movie, he was done extremely, extremely well, in my opinion, and the actor did great. Um, I don't think any actors did bad, I should say that. I don't think any of the actors were bad. If characters were bad, it was pretty much just due to writing, I think. Um, at least in my opinion. But, um... Yeah, Kung Lao was great. Um, Kano was great. Kano was really, really funny. 
and um, I hope they find a way to bring him back. For those who don't know, he did die, so hopefully they can find a way to bring him back in the sequel. Um, the Scorpion, he wasn't in it too much, he was in it at the start and the end, and in a couple tiny scenes sort of in the middle. He was, I think he was done, I don't think he was done well in terms of writing. In terms of acting, he was, he was great. And in terms of the fights he had, because wherever he was, there was a fire pretty much. Uh, it was good. It was I really, really, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about Scorpion. I think uh, his costume as well. At first, I really didn't like it, but I, I think I'm starting to like it now. It's just, it's really, really cool, and it sort of has, it's very sort of Japanese like which is a good thing because uh, Scorpion is is Japanese so it definitely fits his character and then uh, lastly I'm going I'm just going to talk about the characters that I think were done really well um, which were the ones I just said and I'm going to end with my personal favorite character of the movie and just my favorite character in general and uh, that's Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero was done insanely well um, I don't think anyone would disagree about that. Um, if you see other reviews, pretty much everyone says Sub-Zero was extremely good. The actor did insanely good. Oh my god. The actor did insanely good. Uh, Joe Taslim was awesome as Sub-Zero. I don't really have any... I don't have anything negative to say about his performance. Um, pretty much only positives, but... Um, you know, the fighting in the movie, not just Sub-Zero scenes, um, but Sub-Zero scenes, all of them were extremely good, and um, I'm looking forward to what they do in the next movie, whether they uh, find a way to turn um, Sub-Zero, you know, bring him back to life and still be Sub-Zero, uh, or whether or not they make him Noob Cybot and we get Kwai Liang in the next movie. Uh, we'll just have to see, but... And I said it again, but um, <laughs> but going, guys, the actual f problems the movie has that I didn't talk too much about in my review, I don't think, is the actual, the main problems this movie has is the editing and the sort of plot. The plot is fine. There's a lot of sort of winks to the audience, but none of that really comes in the form of storytelling. It's all in sort of one-liners or just little things you can see in the background. None of it really is to do with the plot. The plot is pretty original, I guess. Obviously, aside from the fact that they're using, you know, characters that already exist, but the, uh, the actual story, for those who don't really know, I'll kind I'll run you through it a little here. So, pretty much, it's about this new character that uh, isn't in any of the new Mortal Kombat games, or hasn't been in any Mortal Kombat games. Uh, and his name is Cole Young, and he's definitely sort of the um, the bit of the movie that most people have a problem with, or that people sort of split with. So, oh sorry, split about. So I'll talk about that. That's sort of where I'll that's probably where I'll end the video because that's the problem that most people have with this movie. Um, but we'll get we'll cut that out. Um, so the movie is pretty much about, as I was saying, is about this new character Cole Young who is a MMA fighter and he's kind of just getting his shit pushed in at the moment. We've seen, or we saw I guess, that he was extremely good but he's kind of just shit now and he was born with a dragon marking that all the Chosen ones, oh my god, that all the Chosen ones have um, and pretty much we learn that he's a descendant of Scorpion. At the start of the movie, Sub-Zero and Scorpion fight. Um, Scorpion does die, but um, his wife hides the uh, baby in the house before her and Scorpion's other child is killed. So then Raiden finds the kid, or well, the very, very tiny baby, and take, takes care of it, and then the Hasashi bloodline lives on. And Sub-Zero sort of assumed that that was over, that he sort of that he got rid of all the Shirayu and got rid of Hanzo's bloodline, which he does find out later on uh, definitely isn't the case. But um, we pretty much, if I cut a little bit here, it's pretty much Sub-Zero is trying to hunt down, not just Sub-Zero, but 
because he's like the main villain of the movie, even though it's meant to be Shang Tsung. Sub Zero pretty much feels like the main villain. Uh, Sub Zero and I guess Melina are sent to assassinate all the Earth Realm fighters with the mark before the actual tournament begins, which they're not successful in doing. Um, and pretty much without spoiling too much, that is really about it. It's just about the Earth Realm warriors, or I guess I should say the Outworld fighters, trying to kill the Earth Realm fighters before the tournament can begin, so Shang Tsung can claim Earth Realm and rule it, and pretty much just get out from, get away from Outworld. And that's pretty much what how I can put it without spoiling too much. Um, Cole Young is the last bit I want to talk about here because some people didn't mind him, some people completely hated him. Now to me, it had nothing to do with the actor's performance. I think the performance, the acting performance and the fighting performance from Lewis Tan was great. I don't think he did anything wrong, but I think the character that they wrote for him isn't good. Obviously the character isn't based on him or anything, but um, I don't think the character is great. And the reason I think that, not only because it's just a character that doesn't exist, his actual character doesn't really make much sense. Um, because it sort of alters Scorpion's backstory quite a bit by making this new character. Um, when he unlocks his arcana, that also doesn't really make sense. How he unlocks plot armor, it's a bit weird. And overall, his character is just kind of bland. Like, with a lot of... With all the Mortal Kombat characters, you know, they all feel sort of... They're all pretty cool, like they all have a big backstory. They all have powers that... You know, they all have emotion, things that make you care about them. Whereas, you could argue that because he's a new character, that, you know, he wouldn't be able to do these things because, you know, we've been learning about these characters for years. And while that is true, that's why he probably shouldn't have been in the movie. I feel his role definitely could have gone to Johnny Cage. However, there are some things I did really like about him. However, um,. Oh well. However, there are some things I actually did really, really like about Cole Young's inclusion. Um, I thought his sort of storyline with Scorpion was actually pretty cool, which obviously we couldn't have had if it was Johnny Cage instead of him. Um, I really enjoyed the, t the fight he had with Sub-Zero uh, and Scorpion at the end, even if it was a bit dog. I do really... I did actually really enjoy the 2v1 fight. Um, his armor, even though it is plot armor, I actually did think it looked pretty cool. Um, his character development was okay. Um, I find it kind of strange how he beat Goro. Um, I think Goro probably should have done a lot more in the movie. He kind of just showed up and then got his ass beat. Which um, isn't really how I think Goro should be written, because he is he's shown to be extremely strong and then he just gets beat by some new guy which um, a lot of people and that includes myself actually had an issue with I don't think he would be able uh, I don't think he would be able to beat Goro uh, you could say that it's because of his arcana because before he got it he was absolutely getting his ass beat and that's pretty much why people are saying it's plot armor and um they're, they're pretty much right i mean they're not they're not wrong but um pretty much to end off cole young is not terrible but he's obviously going to be in the sequels so if you guys don't like him you're kind of just gonna have to get used to him at this point but um yeah, Cole Young is just fine, really. I don't have much to say about him, or much else to say, I guess I should say. Um, well, I said I'll say, yeah. Um, but that's about it for Cole Young. I mean, he's just a very, sort of, he's just a fine character. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much all I'm going to say. Um, pretty much the main complaint next to Cole Young that I hear is with the arcana sort of issue here um, the main one i hear is with sonya and jack sonya sort of unlocks her arcana by killing kano 
and then she like in the very next scene uses it to kill Melina which I have a lot of problems with this scene the first one is how did Sonya get her arcana so damn quickly the next question is how did that kill Melina simply because Melina was sort of shown to be good fighter obviously not as good as Sub-Zero but she was shown to be sort of like the second best uh, henchman Shang Tsung had and then she just died instantly I kind of feel like there should have been a uh, another fight because Sonya and Melina fought earlier on in the movie so I kind of feel like if they had a proper fight here that could have sort of ended their fight Melina won the first fight so Sonya won this one and then unlocked her sort of energy rings that she used um, to kill her if she unlocked them sort of during their fight then it would see more sort of uh, Realistic obviously it's Mortal Kombat so it doesn't need to be realistic But it just would have made more sense in my opinion if she sort of unlocked this power You know once she had actually fought her for a bit first um, But and Jax's is, is the last thing I want to talk about um, His arcana sort of just comes pretty randomly Jax loses his arms at the start of the movie to Sub-Zero and then he pretty much gets these tiny little arms that don't really do much but they're just pretty much there and then when there's like a fight when Kano turns on um, turns on Earthrealm and he opens up a it's kind of hard to say what it is but he kind of opens up the uh, sort of border between Earthrealm and Outworld, and Outworld can come into uh, Raiden's temple, and they try to attack Earthrealm, and there's kind of like a mini fight, and uh, Kano sort of throws Sonya, and then a rock falls on her, and then we see Jax try to help her, and he still has his like little shitty arms, so he can't do much, but then his massive arms that we all know Jax to have just sort of grow randomly. I said that weird randomly and it's just kind it's like Sonya's it's extremely sudden and I get it the movie's really short for those who don't know it's about an hour and 10 minutes so it's a, or something like that I think it might be a bit longer um, but for what I saw it was like an hour and 10 minutes or something which now that I'm saying it doesn't sound right but I'm not too sure don't yeah don't just assume it's an hour 10 I can't really remember but it is a short movie, so they probably tried to cram all they could into it. But overall, guys, the movie was fine. If you guys are going to watch it now, don't expect too much from it. Don't expect there to be a lot of story. There isn't a lot of time for them to build up these characters and their stakes. So if you're going and expecting a really, really good movie, you'll probably be disappointed. However, if you're going in just to have fun, then I think you guys will definitely enjoy it. So uh, that's about it for the video. I know this was a pretty long one, but uh, hopefully that should clear up my opinion on the movie. This will be the last video on Mortal Kombat 2021. The movie is good, not great, not bad. And to say what I said in my review, I give it about a 7, 7.5-ish. I'm pretty sure that's what I gave it in my review anyway. 7, 7 to 7.5. It's good, but it's not great. Nor is it bad. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for Mortal Kombat videos. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.